You have choice. You have always had choice. What change can we be today? What action can we take to create a future of greater possibilities? Welcome to the Choice, Change and Action podcast with your host, Simone Melissas. I love that intro. I do too. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's the it's it's one of the things that that I fell in love with about access from the beginning was it always had that sense of of you're not alone and and I see for so many of us we uh, the anxiety and the and the the loneliness and all of these different things that come up we try and. We try and hide them behind some front that we put up, some image that we create, and and it's like, and for a lot of us, it just it gets to a point where it needs to go somewhere. It needs it it needs an outward space that you can actually speak about it from, and actually be you to the point where you can go, you know what, I'm I'm not okay, or I have this stuff going on in my life, and I don't know where to turn, I don't know how to talk about it, and that's the beautiful thing about. <sighs> Well, that's the beautiful thing about talking about it. Yeah. And I mean, I'm in Mexico at the moment, Brendan, I get to see you really soon. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I just finished facilitating a class here and then we've got facilitators and I haven't seen you in, oh God, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen you. I haven't seen Gary almost, and Dane. Almost two years. Right. Almost two years. And Gary and Dane about, I think, you know, 18, 19 months. And one of the things that I wanted to address today is friendship and it's sort of like not making uh, like what if we could create friendship in a really different way? And I just <laughs> listening to Emily talk, it's like, I mean, I haven't seen her either. It's like I've been in Australia and uh, listening to Em and the way she's talking about all of this as well, just, I don't know, it brought tears to my eyes because I'm also here in Mexico with so many friends. And, and I wanted to address not just like having friends, but being a friend. Yeah. And and that vulnerability that goes with that. Like when I, mean, I was talking to you this morning and because I just finished facilitating this class and, you know, sometimes when you facilitate classes, it's it's quite like there's a lot of energy that's required. And so I woke up this morning, you know, and all my friends have been like, you know, they went and worked out at 7 a.m. and did all this stuff. And I'm like 8.30, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, getting out of bed. And there's this moment where I know that I previously have created separation, that I will not ask for contribution and I won't ask for help. And this morning I was like, hey, and I pinged a few people and said, hey, I need some help. I need I need my bars run, which is one of the things I know we've been talking about on, on these uh, lives as well is bars. And even just getting your bars run for a short amount of time is such a relief. But I would go for ages and not ask. And yeah. I think that it's a two-way street. I, I, in one sense, it's like, what if you could be so vulnerable that you just asked and said, hey, I need some help here. Like, I'm, you know, really tired or I'm I'm freaking out. I've, you know, I'm like, I, I, to be honest, it's like there's something weird that seems to occur in my world when I do facilitate these choice of possibilities classes. And it's almost like I would get, like, I would say depressed or sad afterwards. I think you've got this whole like energy of being available for everyone and just going, let's go. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like what just happened? Yeah. And you, you talked about that thing with vulnerability too. And it's like that level of vulnerability when you're willing to push down all the walls and all the barriers that you've built around yourself, it becomes this, it almost, it seems like an intensity of awareness because when, without those walls and barriers, you, you get to become aware of everything everyone's world around you that's that's struggling or depressed or i mean if, if we look at what's going on in the world right now and for you doing a cop it's like it brings up for everyone everything in their world everything comes up in those classes and then it's like okay so now what next but that that thing with vulnerability can often seem like the hardest thing to choose for yourself can you talk more about that about like what it's like to actually choose for yourself with vulnerability yeah, well, I mean, for me lately, it's been, I guess I always live my life with this, um, I guess I'd call it like a protection plan. You know, it was like, okay, I'll get, I'll get so close to looking at me, but I don't want to see all the bad stuff. I don't want to see all the stuff that I've decided is 
evil, terrible and wrong about me. So let me keep up some certain walls so that I can so that I can never expose that to the world. But it's as soon as we have any secret in our world, we can't have vulnerability with ourselves. And and that's the big thing is, is going, OK, well, there's certain things I don't want to expose about me. But, well, my question is, why? What like what's wrong? What's so wrong with you? Or what have you decided is so wrong with you that you can't expose it to you? And that's the thing that I mean, and and it's easy to it's one thing to talk about it. Like it can sound, you know, we, we could talk about it all day, but to to actually choose it, it takes. It can seem like um. It can seem really uncomfortable because you start seeing all these things about you that you've pushed away, thinking that they're the wrongnesses about you. But when you have that, well, I'd say the courage to actually go, you know what, I'm going to look at that stuff too. I'm going to be present with that stuff too. It, you start seeing the gift in everything. And it may not seem like a gift at the start, but when you start, when you, when you, like, let's say, for instance, if you have a secret in your world right now, if you put that in front of you, and actually just be there with it. Just go, you know what? This might not be comfortable for me to look at. I've been hiding this from me for a long time, but I'm gonna be with this now and and see what shows up. See what shows up in your world. And I mean, I was talking to um I was talking to Gary, I don't know, a couple of months ago, to Gary Douglas, and and I was saying, you know what, I have this feeling of loneliness. And he and we talked about it and he said, is it yours? And I was like, um, yeah, it actually feels like it is mine right now. And he said, OK, so br bring it up in front of you and now take a step into it. And I went, OK. And he said, and when you just want to turn away and run. And no, he said, take a step into it. Now expand out a mile in all directions. And that was just expand out in a mile just from asking for it, just making my space bigger than it was being because the other thing that we do with secrets is we compress ourselves in order to keep them so this thing i have with loneliness i've been dealing with my whole life i always had that in my world but i never wanted to expose it because i didn't want to whatever no reason and justification for it i just didn't want to expose it and when i talked to him and he said okay expand out a mile and then he said now now when it gets really uncomfortable take another step into it and he walked me he walked me through this process of not only being with it but walking towards it and for a lot of us what we do with with our lives is we go eh, too uncomfortable running away or that's too much to deal with running away and that's that place where we switch off from being vulnerable we put up these walls and barriers to ourselves and <clears throat> we turn back from things that if we were just willing to take that one more step into it is where all of the freedom exists. I love that, Brendan. Thank you so much for that. And <clears throat> You're welcome. Okay, so it's interesting because we are we we're so we're so different, and yeah. it's like every single one of you who's listening to this is different. And don't disavow your awareness of who you be and how you be. And I see so many people sort of start looking at others as a reference point for how to be in life or even how to be a friend in life. And let's talk about vulnerability a little bit more because I'd like to, like there's, there's something that we refer to in access consciousness as the five elements of intimacy, which is gratitude, trust, allowance, honor, and vulnerability. <clears throat> and one of the things that I did for a very long time was on post-it notes, good old post-it notes, <laughs> in my bathroom. I'd have them on my bathroom mirror, you know, brushing my teeth each night, each morning. And I would look at all of these five elements of intimacy and ask where I wasn't willing to have that with me. Because a lot of the times I think when we go to this, I'm alone or, you know, no one gets me, etc. And it's like, well, there's an element of truth to that because no one, no one knows you like you know you. No one knows you like you know you. But you've got people that you can... Like maybe you've got people that you can lean on and maybe you don't. But what if you also started with you knowing that you're far more greater and far more brilliant than what you've been willing to acknowledge? So I looked at these five elements of intimacy and I went, I need to find out what it's like to have this with me. And I knew that if I didn't, couldn't have this with me, then how could I possibly have that with somebody else? So again, it's allowance. So being in total allowance of myself, 
for whatever. It's like, because how many times do you judge yourself a day? And it's like, okay. Eight billion. You, yeah. Well, what if you just went, oh, what's so funny about me? I'm not laughing about it. Like today, I actually said to my friends, <laughs> we were playing um, David, uh, uh, what's his name? David, David Gray, White Ladder album. And there's one that says, please forgive me, the song. And I went, okay, guys, this is for you. Please forgive me if I'm cranky today because I'm a little tired. But I made a joke of it because I was like, I could feel myself having this energy of just like, er, like I'm a little cranky because I was really tired. So I was like, please forgive me. But that's like that level of honesty and allowance for myself as well to go, hey, I'm tired. So here you go. Not trying to pretend that I'm something that I'm not. So you've got this allowance. You've got this trust, trusting, trusting yourself. The honor, um, trust, gratitude, gratitude, being grateful for myself and then and then also being in total like having that level of vulnerability with myself that I'm willing to you know be whatever is required at any, at any moment with myself and not um not go to the wrongness of me and if you like the second I love that you spoke about that about how to walk through that place of when you you perceive that you're alone um for me one of the things I do a lot is I look out at nature. It's like nature is such a contribution at, to everyone. And it's always been such a contribution to me. It, it sort of has this sense of like not being not being alone. Uh, and let me show you where I am. Hang on. Wow. That ocean. It's like, you know, that ocean is just like, yeah, what a contribution that that is as well. It's uh, so there's always something around that is willing to contribute to you, whether it's a plant, you know, a tree, the land, wherever you are, even if you're in the middle of a city, it's like, you know, the earth is actually willing to contribute to you as well. So <clears throat> what if you started using those tools of you're not alone and the earth is like your new best friend as well? Well, and the, the thing with it too is um, most of us don't allow ourselves to be in to be present enough in our lives to to actually slow down and and even even stand still for a moment and go and be in question of i mean four of the questions that we've got in access is okay what is this rather than go ah oh, uncomfortable push it away or oh, i don't want to deal with that push it away or ah oh, that you know that judgment is just there i always have that of myself it's always been there or whatever that is is go okay so what is this and stop for a moment and actually be with it be present enough with it to go okay what what is this and now what do i do with it oh so can i ask you brandon because you you spoke about how your whole life you felt alone yeah and what are the like did you like what, what are some of the things that you have used or you would choose to uh change that or realize that that because what i okay so what i've seen of you is that i've seen you become more of you and it hasn't been the easiest you know road traveled <laughs> no i apparently <laughs> like to do the the windy road you know yeah. crisscross all over the place the road less traveled or the high road whatever they say and and i know a lot of us have had that like and and in different ways and and what keeps you what keeps you going what keeps you moving uh, well, that I mean, I've always wanted to be more of me, and I, 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 I like the last six months of, for me have been very interesting. Like I would appear to have been choosing to go backwards, but also getting a lot from it. And for me, what I'd done in the past was created that in order to get well not to change that that sense of loneliness or that sense of being alone it was more to avoid it and that for me was let me create as many distractions in my life as i can so i never have to look at it and in the last it's only been the last few weeks that i've, that I've actually started looking at going okay so if i'm ever going to get to where i'd like to get to if i'm ever going to be what i'd like to be in the world if i'm ever going to create that i'm going to need to look at this now and it was basically a, um, it was basically a now or never. And I started, I, I started with like it, it, I started with, okay, so that, um, 
that thing that I talked about before where that energy would come up where it's like, well, it would be easier if I just had someone in my, in my life, if I had some comfort zone so that I knew who I am, someone that I could refer myself to, somebody that could tell me who I am, somebody that, you know, whatever that is. And for me, it was, I had to get really present with myself and start looking at everything in my life. And that's been really, well, it's been really uncomfortable but also quite freeing in a lot of ways because it's like, like you said before, that thing with friendship of having those five elements of intimacy, if you can't have them with yourself, how are you going to have it with the world? How are you going to have it with anyone else? And for me, um, I with starting to facilitate access with doing the COPs, the choice of possibilities class, I went, okay, now I have to be this perfect conscious guy. I have to, you know, I have to act like I know what I'm talking about and all of this shit. And I built this image and I built these walls around me to keep anything from slipping out that might expose the parts and pieces of me that I wasn't even willing to look at. So for me, it was about getting brutally honest with myself. And that's, um, <clears throat> that's where it begins for us is it, it, you've got to be willing to be honest with yourself you've got to be willing to be well i guess like what we've talked about that vulnerability with yourself it can be just you know what i'm going to explore what it is to be me i'm going to explore what it is to to show up as me for me and when you don't have anyone that you need to reference that to of look at me, look at me, or, you know, am I doing the right thing or do, am I whatever? It's like, it's, it's quite an adventure. And I mean, it's one that I, I've only really just begun. Well, and I, I love that you said that about like facilitating classes and then you had to have this image. It, it's like, I've been working with access consciousness for 21 years and I was the worldwide coordinator of access for 18 years. And there was at one point we were at this seven day event, which we have, you know, these amazing seven day events, you know, around the world. And I was sitting in class and I had so much stuff going on for me. And I was sitting there and I was like, I have to hold it together. I have to hold it together. I have to hold it together because I'm the worldwide coordinator of access. And in, on the inside, I was a mess, but on the outside, I was like, nah, you know, and then I actually went to Gary's room one night and I went, hey, can I talk to you? Because I've got all this stuff going on for me. And, um, and he went, why don't you bring it up in class? And I was like, oh, because I'm the worldwide coordinator. So I have to have everything together. And he looked at me and he was like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, because I had thought that because I was the worldwide coordinator, you know, I had to have my shit together, basically. And it's like, so how many of you, because you're, I don't know, a mother, a father, a business owner, you know, whatever it's like you've got your boyfriend girlfriend work whatever you go oh i have to have all my shit together to prove what like this image rather than actually show up as you and i went to class the next day i'll never forget this and i just went put my hand up and i was like hey i've got these questions about this and i was so vulnerable about the stuff that i was going through that was coming up for me that i you know had gone to oh i'm totally you know screwed in this area and there was about 100 people in the class and within the next couple of days, nearly every single person came up to me and just went, thank you. Yeah. Like, thank you for, for being you and thank you for, you know, having this stuff going and be willing to talk about it. And guys, there's no one out there in the world that's got all their shit together. It's no. like, what if life is not about having your shit together? Life is about this exploration of you know, this adventure of going, okay, what next? What next? What next? And one of the things that we talk about a lot in access is being in question so everywhere that you've decided that you are right or that you are wrong because it's not about being right and wrong we destroy and uncreate it right, right. wrong good and bad pot and pock all nine shorts boys and beyonds oh and good job. you put that up there too i did i'm very clever <laughs> wow. the, and you can go to here the clearing and the wonderful dr dane here talks about the clearing statement and how it works right but basically it's 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 just going delete, 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 delete for all of these points of view. So because, I mean, so many people go, oh, I've got, you know, like I said, I've got to have it together. What if you didn't? Like, no. what if you were, like, what if you were, you know, like, I remember, um, what if you're a bad parent? 
Like, what if you were a bad at work? What if you were a bad, you know, uh, boyfriend, bad girlfriend? Like, what, what if you try, weren't trying to get it right and you weren't trying to be perfect? Then what else could show up? And that level of vulnerability that you can be with that just to go, hey, I've got some stuff going on. Like today when I just went, hey, forgive me if I'm, please forgive me if I get cranky, but I'm super tired and I, and I know what I'm like when I'm, when I'm like that. And it's like I might get snappy. But it's funny because since I said it, I haven't. Yeah. So it's like, but I'm willing to be everything. Are you guys willing to be anything and everything? Like what if you showed up just as you, no matter what that looks like and no matter what it takes? And everything at that is times of Godzilla and we destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I do want to, yeah, I do want to mention that um, we do have uh, this page as well, <laughs> accessconsciousness.com forward slash you are not alone. And there are, because we have thousands and thousands of practitioners and facilitators around the world. And we have some amazing people who are offering to run bars for free in the month of September and October. Uh, if you don't know what bars are, just, just ask your body, you know, hey, would you like to get your bars run? And it's it's this, you know, light process on your head, 32 points on your head that starts to delete all of those thoughts, feelings and emotions that you have and that where you get stuck on different things. Like this morning, I literally got my bars run for one hour and I was like, oh, that is so much better. You know, my life is so much better from that. And so if you want to check it out, there's people offering that all over the world that you are not alone because you are not alone. And what if you what if you could receive from the most random of people and possibilities? Like I said, nature, nature doesn't judge you. And it's like, so receiving from nature is a really great start. And then what if you even just tap someone on the shoulder and ask them, hey, can you help me? And it's like, and ask someone to contribute to you. What I find is when people say, oh, I don't, I don't have friends like that or friends that support, um, What's your definition of friendship? Because to me, friendship has always been very strange. I was always like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like when you go, oh, you're my best friend or, you know, I've been friends for 10 years and that's supposed to mean something. Whereas what I prefer, what makes my world feel lighter is like that, well, what if I have people in my life who are a constant contribution and it's not defined of what it has to be like? Uh, you know, showing up in Mexico the other day, I hadn't seen so many people in so long. And I hugged a few people. By about the fourth person, someone in particular that I work with, I just bored. Like, this is before I was doing the class. And I was, like, so grateful for all these people being in my life. And 24 hours, it's like it has this sense like, oh, yeah, I've seen you. You know, it's like that we haven't missed each other. It's not time is irrelevant, you know, with, with how you be with people. So anyway, check out this accessconsciousness.com forward slash you are not alone and find someone to get your bars run. Yes. Um, so I want to explore that thing. So we've, you've talked about friendship. We've been talking about that. But one of the things I've been looking at lately, the last few weeks as well, is being that for me, like actually exploring having that friendship for myself. So see, because it's like, because I get that, see, I get that thing too of like with friendship where it's like, let me give to you, let me give to you, let me give to you, but don't ask me to receive. And that's what I see a lot of us do with this friendship with ourselves is if you actually had to receive from you that the gift you are, most of us go, what? The gift that I am? And that acknowledgement of the gift that you are. Like if you spent a day today just going, you know what, I'm a gift and exploring that for you, what would that change? And but what has that changed for you then? You're looking at yourself as the gift as well, right? Did you put yourself in a big red bow or anything or be like, hey, Tied up. good morning, um, surprise. Well, I've always, I've always looked, I've always looked to others for everything my whole life. And, and it's, it's, it's been an adventure looking at it and going, okay, so what would I, if I was truly treating myself with, allowance trust vulnerability um allowance and gratitude right now how would i be with me how would i be with me right now and that with everything that you're choosing even if you tried this for a day and went okay so if i was being me right now for me what would i choose how would i treat me right, right, being now? Me right now for me yeah what would i choose yeah with everything and this is like 
talk about getting really present with yourself in your life that one day and see see this is the other thing with consciousness is it's an it's an exploration it's an adventure it's always changing so if you looked at it and went yeah well but i kind of like i don't really like myself like i've got all of the shit that i've done and all this stuff in the past that keeps taking me back to the past okay the past is the past unfortunately you've done all that but it's also the gift of that is it's also shaped you to who you are today and if you're listening to this you ain't done Okay, if you're listening to this, you are not done. You are looking for something different. And that in itself is a gift. But for, for how many of us do we acknowledge that? Do we acknowledge, you know what? I'm on this Facebook Live right now and I'm looking at this. I'm looking for something different. That, my friends, is a fucking gift. Yet for how many of you have you acknowledged that today? Everything that is times a Godzilla and we destroy and uncreate it. Right and on good and bad, pock and pot all night in shorts, boys and beyond. So, and this thing with having a friendship for your, with yourself. So you would see that in another and you'd go, wow, you're actually looking for something more. Wow, you're a gift. But when you choose it, it's like, oh, but, you know, I'm just choosing it because, like, whatever. But that, how many things have you chosen already today that were a gift that you haven't acknowledged? Everything that doesn't allow you to acknowledge that now so that you can have more of it, so that you can explore more of that gift and that you can actually have that gratitude for yourself, finally, will you just try and create all that? Right and on good and bad, pock and pot all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. <clears throat> um, so I want to tell a, I want to tell a tale of my, I want to, I'm going to dob on myself right now. Good. Um, I, at the beginning of this year, I started realizing that I had a, a problem with alcohol and a serious problem. And I did not want to look at it. And I was talking to Gary about it one day and he said, um, it, he was talking about me being an alcoholic. And I was like, la, 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 don't, I had so much shit just on that word that I did not want to look at it. And so I've been this year basically acting like i was exploring changing it while not changing it and that this is where i was doing no vulnerability with myself no trust with myself no gratitude with myself no allowance with myself and definitely not honoring me and i want like i talked about before with this creating an image this had to stay beyond this had to stay behind behind my walls in my world I had to keep this out to the world, even though I was um, appearing to be talking about it and appearing to be vulnerable with it. There was so much shit that I had on it still that I didn't want to talk about it. And and now I've gotten to a point in my world where I'm like, you know what, this has to be something that I'm willing to be also. And this was my big, bad, dirty secret and, and was keeping me back from ever having this friendship with myself and um so i don't want to talk about it but it's okay you got this i'm here um you got this brendan you're amazing <laughs> thank I you, I adore you. <laughs> <laughs> um so this this whole thing with addiction is it was it was something that I didn't want to look at. I mean, it was, to me, it was addictions. That's a wrongness. Alcoholism and being an alcoholic, that's a wrongness. Any, any, any addiction that I had, that's a wrongness. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to expose that. I don't want to be weak. I don't want to be whatever that is, but it's like, I couldn't see any gift in me while I was keeping that secret. So I was going, okay, so I'm going to deal with this and I deal with it for a few weeks. And then I drink again. And then I deal with it for a few weeks. And then I drink again. I didn't want to fucking change it. And I knew that. So a couple of <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, I drank again. And um and I I went, I this is I need help. This that was the moment that I actually went, I need help. And I've been for the last two weeks, I booked myself into a rehab place in in um in Italy. And and I just, I basically went, I give in. I give in to this. 
And I knew that I had to in that moment. I had to give in to everything that I was hiding from myself. And, and holy shit, was it hard for starters. But also um, it gets to a point where you can only hide you from you for so long. And for all of you, if you're watching this too, if you're watching, you're a seeker in the world. And, you know, we could, we could tell, we could tell you that, and you know, it, you know that already that you've been looking for something different. And for me, I've always, I always have been my whole life, but I never wanted to show up as that difference. And this for me was just this, I've been like, Um, I'd been trying to basically get myself right my whole life. And then when you have that as a point of view that you've got to get yourself right your whole life, you, you cannot let anything create a kink in that armor, a chink or a kink or whatever you call that shit. But a chink <laughs> But a chink in that armor so anything that shows up that may create a chink in that armor where somebody may be able to get through where you may actually start exposing a part of you you'll shut it out you'll keep it to yourself that's the thing that creates us with this sense of i am alone rather than you know what here's me warts and all and and with me talking about it now it's like it There was such a gift in there was such a gift for me in just going you know what universe consciousness i need help right now i really need help with this this is something i've basically been fighting against my whole life with everything with addiction with with being right with judging with all of this shit. i've been fighting against it my whole life creating these walls and barriers. And it's it, it got to a point where for me, I just went, you know what? I can't do it anymore. I just can't do it anymore. I need help with this. And that one choice changed my whole life. And I, I'm only just starting, I'm only just starting to see it, but, and even talking about it now, I'm going, I don't even know how to talk about this because it still hasn't quite, it's, it's still unraveling in my world. All I know is that I ain't gonna hide it anymore from me and this doesn't mean that even with talking about this this doesn't mean that you go and grab all of your dirty secrets and you just go oh, blah, here's you know let me tell you everything it's not about that and the only reason i'm talking about it is because i know how big addiction is in the world now and i actually didn't quite get that until i started working through this myself was how much shit that we're actually addicted to that we have these outside sources that we've decided we need in order to have us. And for me, the thing with, with alcohol was I knew that if I had that, I always had a back door to being me. And, and it was like to recognize that and to take that vice away and go, you know what? Okay. This now I'm going to be with this, whatever this is. And I, I, I'd gotten to a point where I recognized that no matter how uncomfortable it gets, I'm going to be with this. And it, I've learned more about this. See, we've talked a little bit about this thing with receiving, but you can't have receiving without the being. You can't have the being without the receiving. So how do you get to it? How do I even begin to start expanding my, my receiving and how do I even begin to start expanding my being? How do, like, if I'm, and I, and I want to be as pragmatic as possible with this because it's, it's so, it's one thing to talk about it and bring all the shit up in your world. And I'm sure I just brought up a lot of shit in a lot of people's worlds with where it's like, fuck, like I've, whatever that is going on for you that you've, whatever that is, but it all begins with a question. And if you, 
So for me, what I've started doing a lot more is being in the question with, okay, so what would it take for me to be more of me with this? What can I be today that I've never been willing to be before? And, and then going, okay, what next? And so, I mean, I'd spent my whole life trying to figure out how to be, trying to figure out what is, what do people need to see me as? What is my image? What do I need to, what do I need to do? What do I need to fix? Who needs me? How do I fulfill that? How do I do, you know, talk about a constant fucking head trip. There was no willingness to be something different. And while knowing that I'm different. So you've got to start with that question of, okay, so I'm going to go on this journey. And if you made that choice right now of just, you know what, this kind of resonates with me, or this, this is something that gives me lightness in my world. And remember anything that makes you feel lighter in your world is what's true for you. Okay. Anything that's heavy, it ain't, that's the lies in your world. Okay. So it's like, if any of this is there for you, if you it, it's, it begins with you making the demand of yourself of, you know what, I'm going to go on this journey to explore what it is to be all of me. And that's where it begins. And it's like, and then don't worry about it. And this is where the you're not alone comes in because it's like the universe just goes, oh, finally, <laughs> you know, I've been waiting for you, you asshole, you know, but it's like, it's like just, there's that, but th this is this, the next step to this is where I see for me, and I see a lot of us for me definitely w was where I was stopping was the next step after that takes immense, 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 immense kindness for yourself. And that's like, in order to ask for something like that, you got to be willing to take the next step of whatever this shows up as I'm going to be kind to me with it. I'm going to, I'm going to start exploring what it is to be me. And no matter what that is, I'm going to have the kindness for me as I start receiving everything, everything that I am, because there's certain things. And when we go out of this thing of image, we go out of all of the, the boxes of this reality. You've just taken yourself out of a box that you've put yourself in and gone, this is me in this box. This is where I fit. This is where I belong to dropping the walls of that box. And then you're going, holy shit, there's a whole lot more to me than I ever imagined. What would it be like if I was kind with every single one of those elements that I start receiving? And um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what else to say with that. Well, I, I'm, I'm really grateful, Brendan. And there's, I mean, there's so many pieces to this that, uh, you know, I'm really grateful that you mentioned and hopefully people are listening to because it's, <clears throat> it's sort of like that place of like, what are you, like, you are not alone. I mean, <clears throat> that whole concept is a lot of the times people look for somebody else as this source for themselves rather than, I so get what you're talking about, Brendan, is, that you are looking at you as the source of creation and you are looking at you to contribute to you. Yeah. And I so get that when you are willing to have that, that you have that strength and that courage to, to be all of you and to, to, to talk about whatever the hell is up. And it's like, and to go, okay, I'm not wrong for having some stuff going on. And now what can I be to change it? And also reaching out to anyone and just saying, I mean, you reached out to a rehab center yeah, and you went, I need help. And it's yeah. like, you, know, you reached out to friends as well, but you also reached out to a rehab center. And it's like, okay, so who do you need to ask for help? And I just want to talk to the other side just a little bit at the moment because um, I see people get really uncomfortable. So say, you know, with you, with everything that's going on, it's like how many people sort of go, ooh, you know, and it's like they get uncomfortable with the amount of change that you're choosing and the amount of stuff that you're you're confronting. And don't, don't like, like if that's a friend of yours or something's going on too, it's like still put your barriers down. Like Brennan said to me before, what are you drinking? And I said, a margarita. It's like, but how many people go, oh, your friend's just been in rehab. You're not supposed to drink in front of them or you're not supposed to talk about alcohol. But that's actually not going to contribute to Brendan that if I, if I do that. And it's like, so, but it's like being in allowance of everything that's going on and also being um, available but don't like hide from someone like a friend of mine once said to me, and he's done a lot of stuff with mental, you know, health, et cetera. And he said, reach out to, to whoever and, you know, and keep the conversation going with someone. 
Like even if you're like, hey, are you okay? Or, you know, what's going on? But don't be okay if someone goes, hey, I'm shit. And it's go like, talk about anything. It's like, okay, so keep the conversation going and see what you can be to contribute to changing that for them. But even it could even be, you know, when you're on the phone to someone and sometimes it's like you've got really nothing to say, but there's this energy of someone being there. You're like, okay, that. It's like it might not be about words. And can I just say again, please, if you're listening to this and you've never had your bars rum, you can go to accessconsciousness.com forward slash bars and there's bars classes, there's bars facilitators, so you can get your bars run, et cetera. But there's also this page again, the You Are Not Alone page. Uh, there's facilitators all over the world that are running bars for free in the month of September and October. So please check that out. It's, it's, um, well, do you want to talk about bars and what that's been for you? Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> can I, first of all, say, man, I need my bars run. Um, yeah. um, but bars, bars saved my life. I mean, I was definitely on the, I was, I was one of the people that came along and bars, it changed everything. The first session. And um, I mean, for a lot of you, you heard Dane tell the story about when he, he picked up the newspaper and saw an ad of All of Life Comes to Me with East Joy and Glory. I did exactly the same thing <laughs> um, because I liked Dane and I wanted to do that. But no, I didn't. I didn't even know him at that stage. But it was 11 years ago. And and I basically, I basically hit rock bottom in my life. And I just was depressed. I was unhappy. I was sharing this tiny bedroom at my mum's house with my four-year-old son and I just didn't just hate my life I hated myself and and I one day I just went you know what I need once again I just went universe whatever whatever you are whatever this is I need help I need help and it was the next day that I found this ad in the paper that said all of life comes to me with peace joy and glory call Mel funny little pink ad in the newspaper and I um I called this girl and she's like um, okay, so we do this thing called the access bars and at worst case, it'll feel like you've had a great massage and at best case, your whole life will change. When she said that, your whole, when she said that your whole life will change a bit, I, something went off in my, something just went off in my world and I knew I had to do it. So I went and saw this girl and, and she, she said, um, she said, okay, so do you mind if I ask you some questions and say this like crazy clearing statement thing? And I was like, sure. Like at that stage, I was like, um, you can basically do whatever you want right now because I'm, I'm begging, I'm begging for help. And so she, I lay down on this table and she started running my bars and she started asking me about my life and different questions and different things came up. I lay there and literally sobbed for an hour and a half. You couldn't stop. And, and after it, she finished. And after it, I went and sat in my car and I didn't start it. I just sat in it and I was just the peace in my world, the peace that I had there. I sat in my car for like 10 minutes before I even started and just, I knew in that moment that my life had changed and it, it is, it kept changing since. And I just, the bars is my favorite thing in the whole wide world for well, that and a few other things, but um, it's one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. But, but, um, the the journey since has been very interesting because like even talking about this now with what I talked about before, like you'd think like once your life start changing, it's going to look like it's an up and 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 up. Well, sometimes you don't get to the things that you've been hiding from yourself the most dynamically until you get enough awareness and enough of you to actually get to the point where you can deal with it. So for me, if that would have, if what I talked about before with the, with the alcoholism and, and the stuff like that, for me, 10 years ago, don't even talk to me about it. I can't even look at that, but it took me getting to that much of me before I actually got to the point where I knew I could change it. And this is that thing that I was talking about before with looking at the gift with everything, because the, one of the beautiful things about consciousness is it will not give you anything that you cannot handle. So it's not about looking for just like life is going to be light and fluffy and airy and wonderful and everything's just going to be easy. But it's knowing that as you get more of you, that's when all of life can come to you with ease, joy and glory. When you get out of the wrongness of you, 
everything can come to you with ease, joy, and glory because you know now you start. And this is another thing that's it's this is another thing that you've got to be willing to ask for is recognizing that as you get more of you, the things are going to show up in your life that you haven't been willing to look at, but now is the time that you actually have enough of you to look at them. So another thing with the kindness of you is have that kindness and go, wow, this this would appear to be something showing up as in my life as if I'm taking a back step. Well, what if it, what if it actually isn't a back step in your life? And what if it's one of the biggest steps now that you have available to take forward? So everything that is and everything that you're looking at in your life as problems that are taking you to a back step rather than they're actually two steps forward if you're willing to look at them as the gift that they are, will you destroy and uncreate all that? Yes. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. So this really takes us out of this place of of having like takes us it takes us beyond this this thing with trauma and drama because if you look at it from that and you look yeah well but my relationship just ended or i just lost my job or or you know all of this stuff because i'm not we're not we're not talking about this from from this place of being um blase with what's going on in the world right now like the world is pretty fucking shitty so it's not about going, it's not about sugarcoating anything and going, oh yeah, well, it's like, you know, this, no, it's about looking at it and going, okay, so with, with this awareness of me and who I am now, what would I like to choose and how would I like to be with this? And I think that, that people in the Facebook lives before this, we talked about this stuff with resistance and reaction. So where we go into this place of, well, we must fight against all of these things. Like if you look at the problems in your life right now, what you've decided is wrong in your life right now or with you right now, how much resistance and reaction are you doing that which keeps you in the fight against it? The only way that we can do resistance and reaction is when first of all, we've aligned and agreed with it. So what have I aligned and agreed with here that keeps me in the fight against it? And it, everything that is, Times of God's own, we just try and create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys and beyonds. <clears throat> but but so there's that and you know, all of that stuff. But it's but but I want to go on this this different different path with this of this thing of looking at everything as a gift because it 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 may seem like it may seem like something that you talk about and just go, yeah, bullshit, I don't want to look at that as a gift. I can't see that as a gift. That's Well, what I'm asking right now and what we're talking about is what if you did? What if you took your life right now from this place of my point of view creates my reality? I've been looking at all of this stuff in my life as a problem. My life is showing up as a problem. I've been looking at the fact that I'm all alone and I keep showing up with this loneliness. I've been looking at whatever that is. What if... For just now, you started switching that and switching your point of view and going, you know what, I'm going to change my point of view with this. Interesting point of view to start with that I have this point of view. Now, what what would, what would I choose now if I was being me? And one of the things I started doing quite a while ago was because um, I, I mean, I would still wake up in the morning and go, oh, I'm still fucking, I'm still pathetic or I'm still wrong or I'm still this or I'm still that. And I started going, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start waking up and going, I'm awesome. Like, I'm going to look in the mirror and just go, I am fucking awesome. Even if I don't believe it. And here's the thing is you don't actually have to believe it. But the more you start, the more you start being that energy, the more you start actually creating yourself that as your point of view. Everything that brings up, where you're like, you can do that? You, yes, fake it till you make it. Everything that is, times you got to do, you destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad. Pock and pot all nine shorts, boys and beyond. So do you want to talk about this tool as well? I'm just looking up. We are like, <laughs> you can literally see a storm coming. So um, here we go. Who does this belong to? So if you want to go to uh, drdanehere.com forward slash who does this belong to, and there's an app that we have, which is an absolutely brilliant app, and it's um, really fun to play with. And do you want to talk about this tool? Because I think that goes so along lines with what you're talking about in the morning of going, I'm awesome. Yeah, well, it's like, because, <laughs> well, it's... And if you lose me, there's a storm. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I'm sure I've got, you know, I can talk forever about this stuff, but... Um, 
is this is this tool, who does it belong to? So we've talked about how 98% of your thoughts, your feelings and, and emotions, all of the pains that show up in your body are not actually yours. You're aware of them. You're, you're picking them up from everything and everyone around you. So this is the way that you actually start breaking that machine of thinking that everything is yours. Because as soon as it comes into your head, you've already decided it's yours. Oh my God, that's now I've got this, now I've got this. And now how many of the problems in your life right now and how much of what you've decided is wrong with you is not yours. So what everything that is times a gazillion, we just try and create it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot on, and shorts, boys. What are you there. doing with your phone? I'm taking a photo. Oh, multitasking. Doing social media at the same so, time. Um, so, so it's using that, um, using well, using that tool for three days. So, it's, uh, whenever anything comes up, okay, who's that belong to? Okay, who's that belong to? And it's going to take some presence. You're going to forget. You're going to go, oh, back into your shit. Oh, that's fine. Okay, but then ask it again. Who does that belong to? Who does that belong to? Who does that belong to? So you can start getting out of this place of deciding that everything is yours. Um, another tool I want to add in with this whole your point of view creates your reality and with everything that we've been doing with this is one of the tools I gave in a class that I was doing, um, I don't know, a couple of months back was start, take, take 10 minutes and write down everything that you're thinking about. Because it's not only the things, it's not only the choices that we make that are creating our lives, it's everything that's going on in our heads constantly too. If you've got in your head going on, well, I'm wrong about this and I'm wrong about that and I can't do this and I can't do that and there's this and, and you've got, see, because we don't even recognize we're thinking about stuff until we get present enough with ourselves and go, oh, my day turned out like that today. That's actually what I was thinking all day. And take 10 minutes and start writing down everything that you're thinking about and see if that's the way that your life is showing up and then go, okay, so what would it be like if I actually started taking a different point of view here? And what would it be like if I had no fixed point of view about any of this? And this whole conversation that we've been having about getting really getting that, having that friendship with yourself and getting present with yourself is it's not about hiding any, any of that from you either. It's not about going, Oh my God, I actually thought about I wanted to um I wanted to go and yell at my neighbor today and that's really terrible or you know I actually thought today I didn't want to have kids anymore or you know I actually thought today for 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 like a moment that I don't want to be in this relationship I'm in anymore or I actually whatever that is but it's like that's all the shit that you're creating your life with that you're hiding from yourself wondering why your life's showing up the way that it is and you can't seem to change anything so that's that thing of just get it all out Get it out. Get it. Be honest enough with yourself to go. Okay, I'm laying it on the table right now. I'm laying me on the, well, not literally laying you on the table right now, but we well, could. But it's like, but one of the gifts that I got out of this two weeks of being at rehab was it was a slap in the face of magnitude, and and I went through, um, I went through five of the steps of the twelve steps in in AA. And the fourth step is basically your life story. You write down all the resentments you've got, all the wrongs you've done, all the all of these different things. And it's like, for me, I went, you know what? If I'm doing this, I'm going to be honest with myself about it. And I was like, holy shit. And I realized that, I realized after writing 40 pages, um, 40 A4 pages, um, I went, wow, there's... A lot of this in here, I don't want to be anymore. Hmm. But it took me writing it down to get to the place where I could actually see where I'm still choosing it. And I went, oh, I'm choosing. Like I could see where there was anger in my life showing up. I could see where I was being selfish. I, I could see where I was doing jealousy. I could see all of these different things that I was not willing to see. But when you're willing to see it, see, when you're willing to see it, see, is you can change it. You have a different choice when you're willing to be honest with yourself. And that's one of the beautiful things about this, about exposing you to you, is when you become aware of something, you can change it. Until you're willing to have that awareness, you are hidden from it. So the beautiful thing for that for me is, oh, I, 
I don't want to be that person anymore. I'd like to be different. I'd like to change this. And so, yeah. Thank you so much, Brendan. I I know that there's a lot of people on here who are truly really grateful for, you know, the vulnerability that you've been today and the vulnerability that you are and continue to be in the choices that you make. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you to everyone that's on here as well. And seriously, if you've done some access consciousness, if you've done a bars class, don't wait, go the next step, do a foundation class, do a COP, do an ESB, do a being you class. It's like, for me, you know, 21 years ago, I'm pretty sure I would have died of a drug overdose if I hadn't found access. Like I was taking a lot of drugs and, you know, whatever. I was like trying to find something else besides I knew that there was something different than this reality. I really did. So yeah. to, to me, drugs was was the closest thing I could find that matched that. And it was my first choice of possibilities class that I went to with Gary Douglas the founder of Access, that I went, oh, my God, this is exactly what I've been looking for. And that class, I stopped taking drugs because I knew, oh, consciousness is what I was asking for because I knew it was like this magic, the miracles and the possibilities that were available for us. But, no, I, I couldn't see anyone choosing that. It's like this reality. It was like people doing trauma and drama and, you know, just all this, this stuff or this mediocre life. And it's like the mediocre life was never for me like I I know I traveled overseas for quite a few years and got back and everyone just sort of patted me on the back and said well you've got that out of your system now you can settle down and get a good job and you know find a husband and do all this and I was like what it's like you know I always knew that my life was going to be different and that I was choosing things that were different and access consciousness is the first thing that 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 came along that I realized I don't fit I don't belong but that's okay because none of us do and you get to be all of you so what if you are not alone is also the beginning of you finding out, you know, as Brennan's been talking about what it's like to be you. It's like, and and also please, you know, use this moment and, and every day of the year that if someone pings you, that's how I look at it. If it pings and you think, oh, I should call that person, then call them. Yeah. It's like, call them, say, hey, I mean, learn bars. And it's like, hey, can I run your bars or something? It's like, what if we were and could be a greater contribution to everybody on the planet than what we've currently been. Like, I, we're both talking about like having that uh, relationship with you, but it's not from selfishness, it's from when you have all of you, then you can then you can contribute to so many other people as well, all the planet, you know, the world, everything. So, yeah. yeah. And, and can I just add something mm. with that too? And if it is selfish, if that's what it takes for you to get more of you, be fucking selfish. But, and this is that this other part with with getting going on this journey is it's do it's it's about doing whatever it takes with see what I know about what I know about humanoids and what I what I is one of our greatest fears is like being evil you know or being like this evil thing to other people and it's like if you're actually going on the journey to being more of you that is not it, that is that is not in your being it's not who you be so this idea that if i be more of me i'm gonna i'm gonna be selfish or if i be more of me i'm gonna be unkind if i be more no if you be more of you you're gonna have the awareness of what can be received if what you're gonna have more awareness of what can be received from others but you're never gonna give up you in order to give it in order to give that which can't be received so just know if you go on that, it's going to just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, enjoy, that's a great, enjoy the ride. And um, I just want to say another thing quickly because I know we're, I could talk all day, but um, with this is because what I am, um, I knew with that two weeks that I did that I that had I had to, to separate to a degree so that I could start, I could start that, that movement of, okay, usually I would have relied on others. I would have went, okay, but help me with this or help me with this or help me with this or help me with this. If you don't have anyone to talk to in a moment where you go, shit, I need some help. I can't get out of my head with this. Get your phone out and hit record. Okay. Mm -hmm. And walk yourself through it. Give yourself the facilitation and you might go, I don't know how to facilitate. Oh yes, you do. You just use your head to, to avoid it. So rather than sit there and go, thinking 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 because the only thing that you can think about is more of what you've decided is wrong with you 
Okay, get out of your head by turning on your phone, hit record and go, okay, so I'm having a really shitty day today and this showed up and this showed up and this showed up. And as you start talking to yourself about it or talking to your phone about it, you, you'll get the different awarenesses of what what's actually going on for you. So there's just another tool with it. Can I, I just want to add in that because it's not about like creating this rabbit hole with that. I love that tool. And what if you started, if you were recording with yourself, you started the question with, you know, if I was truly choosing my life and my reality today, what would I choose? Like, what is it that you would truly like? Yeah. Like when you wake up and you're like, and it's like, well, hang on a second. I'd like ease or I'd like, you know, yeah, to have fun today, or I'd like to, you know, it's like, so start like, you know, having a look at what it is that you could change and what it is you'd like to add to your life and create something greater. Yeah. So Brendan, again, thank you so much. I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and thank you everybody for being here and thank you for all the all the access consciousness staff are so phenomenal yeah. there's like yeah. you know, i don't know 160 of them or something the translators this has been yeah. translated into a few languages thank you so much for that and and m thanks for putting this whole thing together i know there's a bunch of other people as well but just thank you thank you thank you and i'm so grateful for access consciousness and the tools and gary douglas and dane here and it's like how did we get so lucky you know yeah, me too. And I'm grateful for all of you in the world and and just just um just know even when it gets hard, take another step. Even when you think you can't go any further, take another step. Even when you think you're all alone, take another step, please, and keep going. Um you are a gift in the world. As much as it may not be an easy thing to receive, you are. Okay, please start treating yourself that way, please. Even if it's for a day, just give it a shot. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying this podcast and have a question or topic you'd like me to address, please leave a review wherever you are listening. The best way for me to know what it is you want to hear about is to send in your questions, and we actually read all the reviews that come in. So let us know which episodes you loved and what you want to hear about next right there in the podcast reviews. And thank you. Truly, truly grateful.